human thing. Collection of stories. The novels, his first one is called The Last Exit to Brooklyn. It just got released as a movie in this country. Second one is called The Room. His third book is called The Demon. His fourth novel, my favorite, caused me to stop writing for about two weeks. It was called, uh, it's called Requiem for a Dream. It's one of the most heaviest fucking things I've ever read. His collection of short stories is called Song of the Silent Snow. And uh, it's a really good man, and he's a great, great writer. Anyway, he's on tonight, and good old Exine is kicking her thing. <laughs> and then um, the, the human snot machine comes on after that. <laughs> uh, he's right now, he's at the Hilton hanging out. You know, I'm just a stand-in. <laughs> I do Bon Jovi stand-ins, too. <laughs> for a nominal fee, I wear the wig and do the dance. Anyway, <laughs> without further delay, because it's late, and um, I'm sure most of you will be wanting to go to the first uh, first mass at church tomorrow, <laughs> so I want to get Selby on. But anyway, without further delay, is Hubert Selby, whose nickname is Cubby. Thanks for coming down. <laughs> See you later on. Okay, we um, we have poetry readings every Tuesday, I think, called Poetry in Motion. And they have topics that are meaningless, but something to write around. And this is something I wrote for one night, and it was Boys and Girls Together. You know, Brooklyn, you take a murder rap for a piece of ass. Jesus Christ, what a thing to say to a 17-year-old kid. I mean, it really hurt my feelings, saying I'd be stupid enough to take a murder rap just to get laid. I had just run back to the ship a few feet ahead of an enraged madam, one of her girls, and a Greek cop. But I was a victim of circumstance, really. Ed, the guy who had said that to me, wanted to steal the vase in the waiting room of a whorehouse. He tried to buy it, but the madam said no, so he asked me to keep the one unoccupied girl occupied, and he would pay her. Well, the son of a bitch didn't pay her, and I believe he had, so I just hold ass. Fortunately, they couldn't get past the guard at the gate, and by the next day, I had forgotten what he said. Now, that ain't no murder, right? I was 17, been going to sea a couple of years. It seemed to me that wine and whorehouses were an obligation, one I wholeheartedly believed in. Actually, more than 40 years later, I still do. What a great way to spend your teenage years. <laughs> so what's with this murder rap bullshit? It would be so fucking dumb. Well, all these years later, I perceive it a little differently. Like, suppose the murder rap is AIDS, or one of the less publicized diseases that are almost as incurable and virulent. Suppose that kid of some 40-odd years ago was living today. Jesus Christ, what would the poor fucker do? I was told the stiff dick has no conscience. I guess it has very little awareness, too. <laughs> I just can't conceive of me, then, asking each and every woman for our latest AIDS test results. Jesus Christ, what would me and Mamie O'Rourke do as we trip the life fantastic on the sidewalks of New York? If that kid was alive right now, he'd be screwed, uh, to coin a phrase. The only thing that's a guarantee is the oral contraceptive. Say no. At 17, <laughs> give me a fucking break. <laughs> How do you say no at any age when a woman is the most important thing in your life? How do you say no when you perceive time as the black, lonely gap between women, the interminable and pointless eternity between one pair of lips and another? My God, how many movies can you see? How many bars can you close? How many cold walks or cold hit baths? Can fear turn a satyr into a eunuch, a man into stone? I had never been able to say no. How can you say no to your salvation? And women had always been my salvation. I not only could not live without them, I didn't want to live without them. I gave them the power of life and death over me. So naturally I was terrified of them and had to resent them. They might say no, and then where would I be? So I was constantly searching for the right one, the one that would make it better, the one that would fix me, the one that would make my heart sing. And I met her. And oh, did she 
make my heart sing and still does. And she loves me, and I bring the birth of spring into her heart. She says ours is the love affair of the century. So we tripped a light fantastic on the sidewalks of L.A. Yet after 15 years, she had to leave. Had to leave before she went crazy or destroyed herself in some way. I guess putting inhuman demands on people forces them to act inhumanly. I was so afraid she would leave me, I forced her out of my life. I used to think the phrase broken heart was a metaphor, but when she left, I discovered it as a physical reality. The pain of the grief was so overwhelming, I made a commitment to myself that I would not seek a replacement. I just did not want or need a rebound situation. So six years ago, I found a way to say no, not for that 17-year-old kid, but for me. Today, just for today. Yeah. The cops play ring round Rosie. London Bridge is falling down. Boys and girls together, me and. So I beat the murder rap. I didn't go to the east side, the west side, or all around the town. Yeah. I beat the murder rap. But what will I do for pretty girls? Now that Susanna's gone.